Hey everybody, it's Tyler here at the Minnesota Signature Event at Wall of America, checking in with 1000A Foothill Robotics. Uh, California State winners last year, so congratulations to that. Made a good run too at Vex World, so we're excited to talk with them here today on their uh, new high stakes robot that they're bringing in for this event. Uh, some cool, unique features we talked about. Really want you to pay attention to this hook that they have in the front of the robot. The way that they're running is a little bit different from smaller teams, using a sensor to reset that hook every time, and they're getting really quick cycles onto that mobile goal. It's a great grip for that as well too. Some cool code stuff we'll be going into. So let's dive more into this robot coming up here on Pits of Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Vidant, let's start off with your drive base. Uh, you're running a little bit different wheel config from what we've seen from other teams. So I'd love to hear more about that and that mobile goal mech that you have too. Yeah, so uh, our drive base actually uh, is a 480 RPM on 2.75 wheels. And we run the traction drive, which uh, uses a traction uh, wheel instead of drift drive, which a lot of other teams at the event use. Um, so this allows us to have good control over our robot and also not be pushed from the sides, which is uh, extremely important for our strategy, which is uh, gonna be talked about later. And then uh, another essential part of our bot is the uh, mobile goal mech, which uh, we have aligners on the sides and on the back to make sure it clamps at a perfect position for our uh, hooks to score on. So this is different from, this is similar to most other teams. However, it has uh, the aligners, which actually help us a lot throughout games in Autons to make sure it is uh, 100% guaranteed to uh, clamp on correctly. And when we were talking earlier with the aligners, not only is it just aligning, but it's also like, it's taking it from a corner and then putting it against the uh, flat side every time, right? Yes, but if it's directly from the corner, we can't still score on it because of the uh, the way we assembled our uh, clamp. So regardless of on the corners or on the uh, flat side, we can still score on it. When you were analyzing the game, why was that an important aspect for your team to move forward? Because we really haven't seen too many other teams do that. Uh, it's because um, we want to focus on actually scoring the rings instead of having to clamp on it. So we want to spend more of our game uh, scoring rings on the uh, MOGO instead of spending our time uh, wasting our time trying to find a MOGO and clamp on it correctly, which uh, I feel a lot of other teams spend too much time on. Neil, let's talk about this uh, intake uh, mech that you have here as well too. Very impressive, it goes through. When we were talking earlier, uh, I, they have only one hook on that as it goes through in this whole area. I'm so impressed because your cycles are so quick. So I'd love to just hear more about that and anything else from a programming side you want to go into too. Yeah, so our hook here is made of curved polycarbonate. We heat gun, we use a heat gun to bend it and the um, Biggest reason we did that was instead of having a flex wheel first stage, like um, a lot of the early robots did, we um, pick up off the ground instead. And what this allows us to do is that we only have two axles on the entire intake, and that reduces the friction a lot, and we don't have to worry about handoff either. And that allows us to run a lot faster. So we're running 600 RPM directly on, um, directly on the motor. And we have a distance sensor down here, where if we put in a ring, the distance sensor detects the ring and um, triggers our intake, which is primed here with our program with our code. And we pick up, complete a full rotation, score, and have the intake primed back again, which is handled through our code. And one more thing to highlight is up here we have these two rubber bands, which allow us to um, exert more inertia on the ring as it's going down which allows us to force it on the goal, even if we don't have the perfect mobile clamp. So when we were designing this, uh, what made you say, hey, we only want to go with one hook? Like, did you try testing like multiple hooks on it? And why was that maybe not the best fit for you? Yeah, so earlier we tried to test 400 RPM on um, the intake instead of 600, but we realized that it was too slow. We were running it with two hooks, but the hook wasn't always there when the ring was, and there was a delay in the pickup. So we realized that we needed to go faster. And we needed to have the hook there exactly when the ring was in the intake too, which is why we use a distance sensor to, to detect and use the um, hook right where the ring was. But like going like 600 RPM with multiple hooks, like just too much essentially, like too fast no, in order to do something? There's no real need, because if we have two hooks, then when one hook finishes scoring, if we have a hook up here, when it finishes scoring, there's um, the other hooks gonna be past the um, pickup point. So the first hook's gonna have to pick up anyways. So there's no need to have more hooks because it won't make our scoring any faster. 
Yeah, I appreciate that explanation. I think that's really well done uh, from there. Let's pass over to Austin. Uh, it's going to be talking more of the uh, your arm and claw, uh, looking at, of course, some of those uh, wall stakes as well, too, and how you're approaching that. Uh, and you are uh, running a nice hang as well, too. It's kind of integrated in. Yeah, so we went in like multiple functions for like one thing. And this arm does a lot of things. So um, it, it clamps uh, with this claw and it's different than others uh, because usually it would, uh, other clamps would be uh, uh, vertical and they would clamp like this. But um, this would be like ver from on vertical and it makes it easier because uh, when we raise the claw, it goes all the way up here and the ring would be uh, facing the wall sticks and makes it so easy, much more easier to score as like you just have to drive forward and it just automatically goes in. Yeah, let's demonstrate see how that works from that uh, pickup standpoint and then anything else you want to talk about maybe uh, from that uh, hang that you're rocking yes. as well too. So uh, hang, it also works as a hang as when uh, we want to hang, we just have the arm go all the way up and then we would just drive and then uh, it would go and disable and uh, it would just go a little bit above and integrated with all this mech is integrated with like the arm and just makes things simple and much robust. All right, let's wrap up this real talk about some of your strategy. I'd love to hear how you're approaching uh, this match uh, here. Of course, you know, early on in this meta, we know it's going to keep changing all the way through, but I'd love to hear how you came here at uh, the signature event. And then maybe like as we're approaching playoffs, you foresee any differences in playoff matches versus what you have been in quals? Yeah, uh, for sure. So as we started off with the season, we went to a few scrimmages. We hosted a few scrimmages as well in July. And now in August, we went to a scrimmage uh, in Minnesota as well. And what we realized throughout the scrimmages and the first few matches is that the positive corners are extremely crucial, even though that seems obvious. What the issue is, is that a lot of teams try to get their own mobile goal after Auton because there's four uh, robots. Each of them uh, hopefully have their own mobile goal claim to them after Auton, and then they go and try to fill it up. But the issue with that is that they're not guaranteeing that their mobile goal will be landing in a positive corner. So what we realized is that one of the alliances has to go with their mobile goal, but they have to defend the one of the positive corners, get the four rings out, so it's a clear space where the other alliance can fill up the mobile goal with their rings and then put that in the positive corner. And then the alli other alliance who is guarding it keeps on guarding it throughout the match. And since there's five mobile goals, then there's always going to be one mobile goal, which is free reign for us to go get. Because the opponents have their own mobile goals and they cannot have three mobile goals at once. So if we do that movement fast enough, we should really be able to get the fifth mobile goal, fill it up with our rings and keep it latched to ourselves. And since we also have this um, wall stakes mechanism with the claw, uh, whenever we can, because the bots can push us over when we try to score on the wall stakes, we also have free reign to score on the wall stakes as well. If we even score one and there's no other uh, ring on there, that's three points, which is honestly game changing. So we haven't seen a ton of wall yeah. stakes scoring here early on, I think, in the signature event. Is that something you think in playoffs is going to be a little more uh, pertinent, or do you see that maybe like in uh, future events possible? Uh, I think probably more in future events because right now but I've seen more teams are starting to get the hang of and the, they started to understand the importance of the fifth mobile goal because if you have that and you fill it up with your rings then like that it's at least you can get eight points and when you release it at the end and hang that's like eight plus three eleven points so I think the issue with wall sticks at least for now is that there's no such way that a bot can align itself so perfectly and not get moved and especially when you try to score if another bot touches you then the ring falls out and it goes outside the field that is an uh, SG. So you can get a, a error or minor. Yeah, exactly. Major if you do three or four times throughout the tournament. So that is very risky. And I don't think many teams will go for that. But yes, they will only go for that if there's no bot uh, on them or defending them. But throughout the eliminations, I think we're going to see a lot of fifth mobile goal play because um, and it's, it's, I think it's going to be a race of yeah. which um, side can get the fifth mobile goal first because that is what I think is honestly going to be uh, game changing. I 100% agree with you. I think that's the, the meta as it evolves. That's what we're going to see is that quick race to that fifth mobile goal. So we'll see how, of course, how you guys do with that. We can't wait to see here at the Minnesota Signature Event. So good luck. And thanks for telling us more about your robot, by the way. So here, this is Foothill Robotics, and we can't wait to see how they do. Thanks a lot, guys, and good luck the rest of the way. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following.
The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video.